Hello once again and welcome to this latest tutorial from Expresso Mechanic. Now today we're going to be looking at the material iterator node and seeing how that works. And what we're going to use it to do is control the brightness levels for the four materials on the cubes that we have on the screen as you can see. So without further ado, let's go into our Expresso tag here, get, up, get the Expresso window and come down to Expresso iterators material. That's the first thing we need to do. We're going to add some ports, a first material port and a maximum materials port. Make that a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to drag the red material in here and that's the one we're going to use as our receptacle. So we'll uh, add an object port and we'll come down to color brightness and we'll add that port as well. Make it a little bigger and connect our material to the object port. So that's the first part of this done. The next thing I'm going to do is on this Expresso null up here, I'm going to add some user data. First thing we're going to add is our first material. So we're going to say first at, that's going to be our first one there. And the floating slider is what we'll use for the input. I don't want percentage, I want a real value. Steps is fine at being one, and I'm going to go from naught to three. So that's our first user data added. Add another one. This is going to be our maximum materials. So I'll just say max mats for that. Again, I want a float slider as the input. I want a real value. Steps can be one, and this time naught to four. And then finally, I need to add my brightness. Again, a float slider, a real value, but this time a step of 0.1 and from 0 to 1, because 0 to 1 are the values we need to work with the brightness for the brightness control. So that about completes that. So we need to just drag in the Expresso null come down to its user data, add our first material, our maximum materials, and our brightness, make it bigger, plumb our first material into there, max materials there, and finally our brightness over here. And that gives us what we want. And as you can see, things are already starting to happen. What I'm going to do before we go any further, I'm just going to add these to the HUD and then move them over here and show them always. Right, so obviously our cubes have all gone black. Basically, if we want to brighten them up again, we can just adjust this. Now, the reason for that, we've got our first material is set to zero, so we're starting with the red as our first material. Our maximum materials are also set to zero, and if you set the maximum materials to zero, all the textures or all the materials, I should say, are affected. If we set it to one, we only affect the red to two, the, gr the green and the red, because we've got our first material set to red, so it's going to affect two materials. If we set it to three, we'll affect the first three materials, and finally four, we'll affect all the materials as we do with things set to zero. If we move our first material to the one position, and now we adjust, we exclude the red and affect the other three. Move it to position two, we exclude the red and the green. Three, we exclude the first three textures and only affect the yellow. So that's quite important. So if we set our max materials to one, and our first material to one. We just affect the green and leave the others alone. Similarly, we can affect the blue and leave the others alone. And finally, we can affect the yellow and leave the others alone. And we can work with pairs if we wish to. By simply adjusting our first material value and our max material value accordingly. 
So now we're working with the middle two and leaving the others alone. And now the first two and leaving the others alone. So it's quite versatile and it's quite a useful little uh, node to, to actually have to use. It does have its limitations. Um, for example, if we just open the texture here, if you want to work with shaders, please right through the textures and work with these if you've got any of them in there. Unfortunately, you can't. I did try and do this recently. I'm developing a new course which I plan to release on Vimeo Pro hopefully later in the year. And uh, basically, I was trying to use the iterator here to affect a shader within a texture that I'm using there. Unfortunately, to no avail, there was absolutely no way that I could make it do it. Um, the, I just ran out of options. There were no, there, there was just no way that I could iterate through the materials and reach the shaders and, and affect them. So I resorted to using a Python script in the end, uh, in the Python node. And that worked out fine, but it was a bit more long-winded than I'd like. So perhaps it would be a nice feature if we could have a shader iterator in the future in Cinema 4D, or possibly enhance the material iterator in some way to include the shaders and their various properties. But uh, maybe that's something Maxon could think about for the future. But anyway, it's all quite nice. It all works very, very well. So obviously the first material there, we've got every material's got an index value ranging in this case from naught through to three. Now another thing that we can do, thinking with that in mind, if we select our material here, we have an exclusion window here. And if we drop the green in there, that's in there. Now our first material is set to zero and we're set our max materials to one so that we only work with one material. So we're working with the red. If we set it now to two, we find that we skip the green. We'll put our first material to one so that we only work with one material. We're skipping. We're skipping the green. We're still, we're still working with two materials because I think that's set to there. That's it. So I only want to work with one material. So I'm working with the blue. If I go back to zero, I'm working with the red. So the green has been excluded. So as soon as we go to one now, that would have been the green, but now it's the blue. However, if we then go to the two, we get the blue again. And finally, three will get the, the yellow. It's worth bearing in mind, as I said to you, all the materials here have an index value ranging from zero through to four, or three, three I beg your pardon. Now, that doesn't change. The blue still has an index value of two, but because we've excluded the green, it's also taken on the number one as well, even though that's not its index value. That index value is, is kind of passed to the blue. So it's got two index values at this moment in time, which is something that's worth bearing in mind. OK, so let's just remove the green from here. And now we're affecting the green again and it's all back to normal. OK. So that's the uh, Material Iterator node, and that just about winds this tutorial up. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I am working on some more. I've got a couple of displays that I'm working on, an oscilloscope and also a heart monitor display. Um, both of those tutorials will be coming over the next couple of weeks, and they will include um, Espresso and MoGraph. So there's a, I'm combining a couple of elements of Cinema 4D Studio there. For the first time, I've never really done much with MoGraph and, and Espresso, but I uh, decided I would this time. So uh, keep watching out for those and uh, I'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye bye.